Hello everybody, it's a City Mad Haven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Reforge over on the E75. Um, the E75 has been in the game for a very long time. Um, honestly, this tank has been through a lot of buffs and debuffs as I start to knock everything over on my desk, because, you know, that's just how I am. But, the E75 itself, there is a few things about this tank that has stood out over a very long period of time. Uh, one of the biggest things that they did update on the E75 back in the day was its mobility. They uh, brought up its power to weight, they brought up its top speed, making it to where this tank is actually able to get in and out of the fight extremely quickly. While beforehand, it was just sluggish, heavily armored, and just slow to get anywhere. Um, E75 has seen a lot of love, which is actually probably one of the biggest reasons why, on the Reforge, this thing has not seen... A massive amount of buffs. So on the starter turret, uh, there's actually not a whole bunch that they did. They basically just took the turret one, which is the stock turret, and they gave it the E1, not the E100 buff. That would have been just whoa. But no, they gave it the Tiger 2 buff. So you now have the Tiger 2 turret on top of that with the 105 having the increased DPM as well. But honestly, I don't recommend using the 88 or the 105 on this tank. The best gun for this tank is going to definitely be. The 12.8 centimeters, so the 128 millimeter gun. This is your best friend. Increasing the aim time on this thing, and along with that, bumping up the turret armor from 252 to 265, which really isn't a super big adjustment for this tank. So, whenever you're maxing out your gun depression right here, you're going to be seeing about 290 millimeters of effective armor. So, now with that extra 13 millimeters of armor, we're probably going to be looking at about 305 to 309 millimeters of effective armor in the frontal plate now which really it's not a big buff but it makes it to where heat rounds aren't as consistent they're gonna be struggling a little bit more uh, along with that looking at the side of the turret this thing is just thick 60 millimeter top plate a 160 millimeter top armor so your upper hall 160 the top plate on the turret itself being 60 millimeters you can pull out against 155s consistently bounce them and we're gonna be showing that off in the uh replays today but other than that dude e75 it has stood the test of time i have invested an absolutely absurd amount of time inside this tank to um three market and honestly i'm not going to be working my way to get a um, to uh try and 100 percent it so in today's play session for the e75 um i only put 11 matches in it but i averaged a 5844 wn8 and yeah i'd, I'd say that with the buff, um, I haven't really noticed a big, massive difference for the tank itself. Uh, Lifetime-wise, though, I have invested... Why is that up there? Oh my goodness, I'm so lost. 395 matches inside my E75. Uh, within the last 30 days, I've only put 20 games inside of it. That's just because with the most recent buff, I've been playing it a tad bit more and enjoying it. Uh, other than that, let's go ahead and jump right into the replay. So first off, Melanovka. Uh, these matches were actually played during the same play session. They were, I believe, Milanovka. And then the second match you're going to be seeing right after was immediately after the Milanovka match. But overall, E75, this is one of those tanks that, for me, it is definitely a keeper to keep inside your garage. Um, beforehand, everyone was talking about how the E75 is technically the best tank in the line. That there's no point to jump up to the E100. Me, personally, though, I enjoyed the E100 even whenever it did not have the armor buff on the turret. But now, it's just standing up even more. It's just so much fun. Not gonna lie, you guys. This update with the <laughs> red tigers and buffing all of the tiger tanks. E100, E75, Tiger 2, the Tiger 1. Um, VK36, I still have not yet set it up to be able to play it. And I think uh, later tonight, right before I get off, I'm actually going to set it up so tomorrow I can play it a little bit. But, E75, this is a tank that, it's, it still suffers from the Under Armour right above the tracks. Um, 122s are the only guns that can overmatch it and, and bigger. But there's a way to counteract that. Reverse side scraping inside the E75. I did have a replay where I blocked 4,000 damage, but I didn't want to use that replay because it was literally just me sitting there getting irritated at an E4 that I could not pin even loading premium against the hatch. So, E4s, they're kind of extremely powerful tanks inside the game. 
Um, if you guys want me to, tomorrow I can take some time out to try and get a few matches inside the E4 if you want to see a replay in the E4. And uh, me going over the E4 a little bit and then showing you guys how to penetrate it. I'll even hook up my secondary mouse and show you specifically on the turret where you want to load your premium shells and fire. But that's only if you guys want me to do that. Um, jumping back into it, E75, phenomenal tank. It, this thing is just heavily armored, and even whenever you're bottom tier, I still don't feel like I'm, well, mid tier, not bottom tier. Bottom tier is two tiers lower. If they ever implement plus one, minus one, I find that to be a lazy way to balance out matchmaking, just because rather than actually fixing it to where, you know, you're one of three eights in a 9-10 lobby, um, love artillery. But, Mat matchmaking, uh, they should implement the 3-5-7 rule or the 4-5-6 rule. That would actually be a lot better uh, for matchmaking itself. So, tier 10s, it's either 4 or 3 of them. 5 tier 9s, guaranteed. 7 or 6 tier 8s, guaranteed. And that is the worst possible matchmaking. Um, secondary is that tier 9 and tier 8s would see matchmaking. And it would kind of go down further in the tiers as well. So, for... Tier 9 and 8 focus matchmaking, it would be 6 tier 9s and then 9 tier 8s. And that would be some really good matchmaking right there. Honestly, class-based matchmaking, it makes sense, but if they were to implement something where we don't see bottom tier as consistently, or if they make it to where the matchmaking is a little bit more balanced and slowly work around that, that would be a better choice to go down. But matchmaking, we're not talking about that today. We're talking about the literal 13 millimeter buff on the turret of the E75. That's all they did. This tank is practically just the same, a little bit of a thicker turret. Um, being 265 now, whenever you're flat on facing an opponent, not using your gun depression, um, standard rounds aren't gonna be able to go through your frontal turret armor, but even then, you still have a slight angle in that turret armor coming back, so it's not like a massive jump. Now, I've played my E75 enough, I have mentioned this in the past, that learning your guns is kind of the best thing to do, and knowing your aim time, knowing your dispersion values, everything else, a lot of these shots you're going to see that they're not even fully aimed in, and that's because I've played this tank enough to know the comfort zones on when to fire for a 50-50 chance, and that is just, it, it's, there's, sure there's RNG in game, um, but whenever it comes down to shell velocity and aim time, um, those are actually bigger factors than dispersion value. So right here, um, I actually kind of want to jump back just a little bit right there and make a shout out on this uh, next shot coming up. So if you guys keep track of my speed while I'm aimed in, I'm actually still consistently hitting the throttle, maintaining 11 kilometers and then taking a shot on the move. But the fact is, I never came to a complete stop. Um, that is something that you guys should also try out. Rather than coming to a complete stop, to be able to stay on the move, barely pressing in that throttle, to be able to take a shot while moving around. Uh, there's moments that can actually make a massive difference in your gameplay and still allow you to keep moving without coming to a complete stop. Because if you come to a complete stop, you're going to have to re-engage your tracks, you're gonna have to start driving again, you weigh a crap ton, you get, you're starting from zero, but if you barely have it going a little bit and then you full throttle it, it's gonna help you maintain speed for the entire way. It's just a way to help try and make it inside your slower tanks to be able to move a little bit quicker on the map. Now, E75, there, there's not much to talk about. This tank has been in the game for a very long time. It's an extremely strong tier nine. Then again, there are a lot of tier 9s in game that can be extremely strong. But this one, it is just, it's been buffed quite a few times. Um, it does have its flaws. If you're caught out in the open, that lower plate will get you caught out quite a bit and probably be your downfall. So playing haul down, um, retaining heavy aggressive angles, avoiding fighting people driving uphill like this because your engine is right in front of the tank with the transmission being there. A lot of German tanks have transmissions in the front and can be set on fire from the front as well, so expect a lot of engine damage. But primarily, this tank can be very solid. It's a small buff, it's nothing really crazy, especially with the 160 millimeters of side turret armor, I believe. Actually, I have to double check that. 
Yeah, so you got 180 on the little uh, tracks inside the spaced armor, and then it jumps up to a 160 millimeters of armor. And then your little ball lobes on top are 80 millimeters, and those are basically just considered weak spots on the uh, left and right side of the turret. So keep that in mind, you can pin those pretty consistently without much of an issue. If, depending on like how standstill everyone is. If you're standstill, that's how it's going to go. So this is the first replay. Um, this one wasn't really going to be showcasing a whole lot other than uh, just the mobility of the tank and me still working on the mark. Uh, I don't want to hit the gold mark because they don't look that good in my opinion. The gold and the American tanks, it kind of blends in a little bit too much with the base camos for the tanks. And you're kind of required to buy camo for the tank to make that gold mark stand out. Um, but... You know, you got this brown tank and a gold mark, and you can barely make it out. However, with the black skin on the E75, I think gold might look good. So I don't know if I want to try and get that. But right here, worst possible matchmaking we can have for this tank. Um, this is going to be showcasing the turret armor now with that 265 jump up. Even when you're fully hauled down, uh, that the turret armor is just phenomenal. You have 8 degrees of gun depression, maxing it out, effective 310 millimeters of frontal turret armor. And then once you come further down the hill, where they're past your actual gun depression, it becomes an auto ricochet. And on top of being an auto ricochet, it also jumps into higher categories of 370 to 380 millimeters thick of armor. So, this is kind of where this buff kind of really hits home. Is that now, whenever you kind of pull further back and you're maybe hitting 12 degrees compared to the opponents rather than being able to aim at them they're four degrees a little bit too low for your gun to aim down on top of them and uh, your turret armor just jumps through the roof now with it beforehand you would hit about 340 to 350 and they had a 50 50 chance of pinning that to like a 70 percent chance of pinning that and now since they jumped up to 265 that chance has dropped down to about a 10 percent chance of penetrating that upper turret whenever you are fully hauled down um, another thing to utilize is your gun. Um, guns have got a thickness to them, and if you know about overmatching mechanics, if the gun is bigger, it can absorb shells. So for instance, the E75 gun is 40 millimeters thick. It's not the thickest. Uh, the Polish have got some of the thickest. The tier 8 50 TP has got a 90 millimeter gun, which is 90 millimeters of just pure armor on that gun, so 180 millimeters in total. Using that to cover your hatch, good luck pinning it. Because whenever you hit Space Armor with a heat round, it's got to travel through the gun, which there are two layers of the gun. So whenever you see 40, it's actually 80. And then, not to mention the angle that the shell enters at, if it's a heat round, it loses 10% of its overall penetration every single 10 meters that it passes through. So, well, 10 millimeters, not meters. If it was meters, it'd be insane. But millimeters. Now, here, I'm just going to be taking it slow. As I said, we're going to be putting premium rounds into the hatch of the E4 and do absolutely nothing. Um, if anything, I think that the E4 right now really drastically needs a debuff because those tanks are just, they're performing way too good. And whenever Wargaming stops and says, well, their survivability is increased, their, their bounce rate really hasn't moved much. It's increased just a tad bit. Well, that's because no one's shooting them now. Because the only thing you're going to do is bounce. So you got to relocate to make sure that you're guaranteeing these pins. Uh, this position right here, I really like it. It's heavily exposed to artillery, however. But lucky for me, there's no artillery this match. Can play a little bit of a, a little bit aggressive right here. Now, I don't know what to talk about. The monologue is going to hit. There's a wall there. High roll for 540 with a 490 gun. The aim time increase that threw on this as well with the 128. It, the gun feels like it's handling a lot better. Um, right there is a spot you want to aim at the E4, uh, but I couldn't really see because of the bush in the way. I don't know if his barrel was in the way or not. So sadly, it probably hit the barrel. But taking our time, just making sure we're guaranteeing pins, take it slow. We're still full health as well. We've ricocheted 850. And just a little bit of tension inside this lobby right now because if you look at the map we have a couple of guys here stuff is just going down slowly and uh, it's all about just holding as much as you can not really playing too aggressive now 
another thing is for a video that I want to try and do for the future is talking about crossfire locations and uh, ways to work with your platoons if you guys are platooning up, which I do recommend to make friends and platoon up because it, it brings more life into the game and you'll have a lot more fun platooning up with friends. Even if you're someone who doesn't platoon up a whole lot, there is something known as the um, Xbox club that you can go on to where you click your middle guide button, click start on the game, uh, go to the little game hut there, you can find groups to play with. Uh, but sometimes, you know, people in there, those little groups can be a little uh, not welcoming. So what I'm going to do is if you guys want to tune up and you want to make some friends, get a few things going, I'm going to be leaving a link to uh, Discord inside the comment section of this video. So if you guys want to make a Discord, come over to Discord and see if you can platoon up with a couple of dudes. That could be helpful because it's always nice to make friends. It really is. And there we go. But right now, even though this was the worst possible matchmaking, uh, we were able to rip out, you know, 3,000 damage before the enemies decided to start pushing in. Which does make quite a bit of a difference there. Putting a shot into his hatch, backing off. Blade also put one shell into him, which helped keep us alive for a second longer. Um, right here, there's just way too much going on. I was aiming in, seeing if I could catch out the M60. Sadly, was not able to get another shot into him. So, E75 buff. Um, I, I think I can officially say that I don't really consider this a, a major buff at all. Like, I think... From from my perspective is that they reforged the entire line. I kind of feel like this was just one of those uh, things they did because they did everything else in the line. And they're like, what can we do to not really break it, but consider it a buff? Honestly, they could have just did the gun and called it good and left the gun the way it was. But then they were all like, hey, let's add a little bit of extra turret armor into there because that sounds like it would turn out a lot better. And honestly, I, I have no idea. Um, I just think it's just a little bit funny on how they did this because the E75 didn't really need a buff, but the buff they gave it, it's not like, oh man, this is tremendous and it's overkill. It's actually just a really small amount, not making a massive difference. So overall, tank hasn't really changed a whole lot. It's still playing the same exact way, but with that little bit of extra turret armor, it does give it a little bit of an advantage now against tier 10s and if you're using your gun depression, reverse side scraping when needed, which should keep in mind reverse side scraping inside these tanks is probably one of the best things that you can do. Because speaking of which, if you are reverse side scraping inside the E75 or even the Tiger II, you lose that weak spot that's actually in the front of the tank. So you had that 40 millimeter plate, reverse side scrape, that spot is now gone completely. So... You know, there's moments you're going to catch yourself trying to reverse side scrape. I do recommend trying it out. It can be a little difficult just because everything is wonky in reverse and you'll find yourself doing a couple of things that you really don't want to do. But hey, it's worth a shot. Other than that, you guys, if you'd like to leave it, if you'd like to blah, 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 like it, blah, like the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Other than that, you guys have a fantastic day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. And I will catch you out on the battlefield. Also, uh, last thing to put out. I've given away four Basantes. Honestly, I really want to see the Italian heavy line get buffed. Um, so those guys that I gave those tanks, auto, I think it's auto, um, mindful. The other two guys, for some reason, their names are still slipping off the tip of my tongue because it was I did it like a couple days ago, and it was just quick grab, add, send, call it good. But um. Play some matches inside those tanks. You know, let's let's get some matches being shown off inside them. Because if we perform bad in them, which I perform like crap, I've got like a 2,000 overall W8 inside the tank and I struggle with it. Except for the tier 10, whenever I'm platooning up with my buddies, it's a lot easier because I'm able to get crossfire locations and rip out consistent 4,000, 3,000 damage matches, even with its horrific DPM. Or if you guys want to see a video on the Rosarante, I can also do that. I really don't want to do that because I absolutely just struggle inside the tank and it makes me want to die on the inside because it's just so hard to play. And, you know, it's it's got a 15 second reload for a 490 alpha. So you, you fire once and then you wait. You watch all your, your buddies fire a couple times and then you wait. 
and then you fire once, and then you wait. That That's all that tank is. It's just a big waiting game and not enough armor to really stand up against the tanks that are going to be pushing up in the uh, front row. Other than that, you guys, I'm out of here. Catch you all another time. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section of what you guys want to see me do next. Other than that, yeah, I gotta go. I'm already making a fool of myself. At least I enjoy it.